Break family, welcome to another episode of the show, NXT UK. You know, this is the weekly show that we always give you guys. And it is sad for me. It pains me. It makes me feel really bad because it is probably the worst episode of NXT UK since the return. I know I was hoping for a lot of changes, but good ones. But, you know, this is actually was taped weeks ago. So, like, everything that is coming out just now already happened a long time ago. But, like, the way that, like, they've been handling this tournament, I mean, the one match, we knew that, like, it was kind of, like, the outcome of it. But, like, the second one, I mean, the first match that opened the show was really upsetting. And to me, this was, Paul, the burial of the familia. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think I said it last week or the week before. I said we got to get a couple more weeks of Vince McMahon's booking on this show. Then, you know, we go back to the reigns of Triple H when he, you know, takes over. Because like you had just mentioned, the show is pre-taped. So, you know, none of it's live. It's from stuff that happened maybe two or even, you know, months ago or even longer. So, you know, we got to deal with that. And, I mean, that's what this was. Whether it's Vince McMahon or who, I don't think maybe him directly, but some of his writers, some of his creative staff, whoever was in charge of this show or the directive of it, they didn't like Be Familia. And yeah, this was the burial. This was bad. I mean, the first match to me was a no-brainer. Who should have won it? Like this. Boy. And 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 and, and yeah, and then they completely went the opposite way. And then you see the match later on, and you think, okay, I mean, we'll get into it when it goes there. But yeah, this was just not good for D Familia. And besides the main event match, just really not a good episode of NXT UK and, and overall. We have, you know, Paul, like we're gonna talk about like the women's division. We still have a lot of doubts. Where you don't have anything concrete. We don't have anything. You know, like oh, this is what's gonna happen. This is the match. No explanation whatsoever what happened with Sheree and Mako Satamura for the NXT UK Women's Championship. But let's start before saying thank you so very much to every single one of you. We will have Emergence Impact Wrestling 2022 tomorrow for myself, you know. Uh, the fate of it being a wrestling fan is actually coming back. You know, Raw is actually decent. Karrion Cross came back to SmackDown. So there's a lot of reasons why. You know, wrestling fans are actually trying to be finally prideful of being wrestling fans. Paul Oliver Carter going against, you know, like you said, the first and the most important member of the Familia, Charlie Dempsey. And, you know, I like to surprise Jean Paul, you know, because Jean Paul is, you know, one of my best friends, if not my best friend in the whole entire world. And, you know, I'm going to give you like a, something, you know, that I just read that is bad, but, you know, like, so we're going to get him really upset <laughs> just for the point of the sake of the show. But like, you know, this match, on paper, we knew Charlie Dempsey, right, Paul? No-brainer here. You know, the guy is the only guy that's been taking care of the Familia, the only guy that has future in the Familia. And, you know, like, the storyline marked that, like, Oliver Carter was actually injured. So, easier outcome, but not necessarily so. Even in the match, Carter, like, you know, was actually being dominated by Dempsey, but in the end, you know, he pulls the upset. So, what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, the match was fantastic. Oliver Carter sold the leg so legit, you thought it was a legit injury. And it might be legit to some extent, but I mean, he'd go for a springboard move, and as soon as he jumped the, to kick off the second rope, he'd immediately crumble to the ground. Like, he was shot by a sniper. And, you know, I mean, just the way he'd scream and sell, he, he would kick, but, you know, then he'd fall down and he would sell because the, the leg he planted was the hurt leg. And, I mean, just everything... He sold it on everything he did. It was so believable. Dempsey was in control. You'd say 90% of this match, if not more, at the end. You know, but I mean, he kept fighting out. He kept kicking out. Obviously, Oliver Carter, you're going to protect this guy. Dempsey, go. he gets the single leg crab. Commentary screaming, oh my God, Oliver Carter won't give up. The ref needs to call it. The ref needs to call it. Oliver Carter just kind of flips him, you know, rolls him up. You know, kind of really hooks the legs. One, but it's right by the rope, so I think okay, maybe Dempsey's gonna grab the rope. Very, yeah, he was just hard. right next to it, but he holds on. And I'm on thinking to maybe De Familia is gonna quick punch him in the head, and the ref's not looking because he's looking down at the shoulders or you know what something. Nope. One, two, three. Oliver Carter wins. So you bury Dempsey, who I think this is his first singles loss. I think. Yes. I think they lost yes. in tag matches and stuff, but singles loss. I think this is the first one. And he loses. He loses in the opening round of this tournament. So this was stupid. You know, at least let him lose to Trent Seven, because obviously we know it's going to be Trent Seven and Tyler Bate. You don't have to be a, a you know, the booking genius. A genius. You don't have to be yeah. a, you know, uh, complete, but, an intellectual but, person to know that. But I mean, now, I mean, the only thing I can think is good with this is now you're going to have Trent Seven get. He needs to literally rip off Oliver Carter's leg. He needs to oh, get yeah. like insane heel heat. 
you know, to really build up for that match, you know, against Tyler Bate. That's the only thing. And maybe they thought, okay, well, we don't want to have Dempsey lose. I mean, I don't know. It, I guess it was a lose-lose no matter what you did. But it wasn't good to have D Familia, you know, this is the first loss, you know, on the show. And it only gets worse. Exactly. I, it, it pissed me off, Paul, and, you know, the bracket. Let's see it just very quick. Oliver Carter, like you said, like against Wolken and Trent Seven, that was going to be the main event. And it, it's just annoying. And, you know, at the end, like I said, of the show, I'll give you like the bomb. You know, we're going to start like doing bombs at the end of, you know, every single show. So, like, let's move on. We got, like I said, like all the girls remember how the show ended last week. We got to see a male. We got to see Adele Dawn. We got to see Eliza Alexander. Also, Blair Davenport. They all came out. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So, like a lot of big brawl, a lot of like chaos, all of that. But again, no explanation no reasoning behind it so that also bothered me you know like and again uh, Sid Scala didn't say all oh, the match didn't happen in the end yeah and then you, yeah, you you saw him backstage and like you said they're all screaming and he tells Isla Dawn he's like no you get out there and he like points to the wherever you know maybe he's saying you know you go back yeah. to the hotel room you and me like let's go let's do this you know ye, ye, I mean uh, let's have I a mean, that's some yeah, magic here yeah I mean I don't know what that whole thing was about but it was no I was waiting for Mako and Saray to come out and start fighting and it was going to be six women going at it I mean I was waiting for something it was nothing no explanation and I, I, I think I actually know what the explanation is Vince McMahon's crew, or whoever was, I shouldn't even just say Vince McMahon's crew, whoever took control of the show recently was like, eh, I don't really care about Saray and Mako, so we'll just forget about them. You know, psh, even though she's our champion, I'll just bring her back in when I, you know, figure out a number one contender, and then I'll, yeah. I'm taking the title off her. You know, they, they don't care. They don't want to push them. You know, even though they did the past couple weeks, they just, you know, they insult our intelligence, and they're like, eh, I don't care. No, that, that was just bad. You know, that was, like you said, really bad. So like, let's move on really quick because Eliza Alexander, after that, nothing happens. I'm good. You know, I don't care. I'm legit. So she goes against, you know, one member of like the U, the Chase U University. Via hell, this was just quick. I mean, Eliza Alexander, I see like a lot of futures. They already got her out from, uh, you know, uh, the other girl that she was with, you know, Zaya, Zaya Brookside. Yeah. They're not together anymore. See, there's Eliza all alone and like a barely powerful shining wizard. Really nice execute, nicely executed. One, two, three, she gets the win. Chase U University, thank you very much. They had another promo right there that I didn't care for. And that was also, you know, the guy from my symbiosis, I think it was, right? I think it was yeah. Eddie, Eddie yeah. Dennis. Yeah, Eddie Dennis. And now he's like he the professor, normal. teacher, gimmick. And yeah, now he's normal. He's not creepy anymore. And they were going at it back and forth. And he's like, oh, well, you know, if you're so legit, why don't you train this guy? And it was Saxon Huxley. And they did that gimmick with A-Kid where A-Kid tried to teach him. Again, really shitty, really bad, awful written segment. Hopefully when the show gets under the rightful hands, you know, the, the, creative, back to the, the, the creative can get back to normal. Yes, absolutely. So that was bad. So like you know, like I said, Eliza Alexander. There's a lot and, of and, like, the match, and, and the women's match. And and the women's match. Anything involving 2.0 people that aren't Braun Breaker, Cameron Grimes, Roderick Strong. I don't care about. No, it is. It is. You know, it, it's pretty bad. So like that was what we had. So like we go from bad to extremely worse. You know, Theo Man, the leader of the Familia, right? Rajan Raja, right? That's fine. You know, he's the stay. He's gonna be ringside and all of that going against Sam Gradwell. This was supposed to be the chance for Tio Man to just go get a win at the expense of Rado. Many other wrestlers have done it. Why couldn't he have got that opportunity? No, you know, Sam Gradle gets the win. Like, uh, you know, the match, uh, Raja guy was kicked out of the ring or like was sent off. And also like in the um, in last moments of the match, we got to see like how Tio Man like uh, hit like uh, the knee brace that like Gradwell has. Then he did his finisher, that kind of dead valley driver that turns it into like a power bomb. But I'm not happy because the leader gets, you know, pretty much jobbed out. And now what's going on? You know, the Familia completely buried. And you, there's no more feud because what are you going to do? Gradwell already won. He's the better man. Yeah, I mean, I like the match. But just the ending, I thought, okay, well, you know, you screwed Dempsey in the beginning. And I, I mean, I guess I kind of get it because Dempsey wasn't going to win the whole tournament anyway. So whatever. But, you know, it's like... If you just look at it for how does the group look if I'm just watching this episode. If this is the first F time I'm tuning into NXT UK. Here's this group, D Familia, okay? One of their guys lost the first match. You know, here we go. Oh, their leader's wrestling in this match. Because when, I, when they showed this last week, they said, oh, this is going to happen. I said, this is a match where no matter who wins, or both guys need a win, 
but whoever loses is screwed because both guys can't afford a loss. So, I mean, that's what it was. It was, you know, it's a good win for Sam Gradwell, but it sucks for Tio Man and Dee Familia because they just look yeah. like a bunch of losers. Yeah, they look like idiots. They look like absolute idiots. And that's a big problem, you know? That, that, that's just bad. You know, like I said, Gradwell gets a good win. He, like you said, was what is the thing that we've been saying for months now? He should challenge for the Heritage Cup. They don't even, you know, they don't even give him the chance. We saw like a promo and they, from yeah, Noam Dar. Yeah, they, and, they show know. the Heritage Cup champion. Like you said, Noam Dar, you know, okay, we're going to get a rematch, you know, hopefully. That will be good. But is, are they going to put it right back on a Noam Dar? No. So they're probably just going to do another match and Coffee, Mark Coffey's going to win again. So why wouldn't you build up a heel? You're building up Sam Gradwell, a baby face. I have no problem with Sam Gradwell, but your champions are non-existent for your World Heavyweight Championship, and your other champion is a baby face, so you should be building up heels, not baby faces. Yeah, so exactly. It doesn't and make also, sense. like you said, give that opportunity to Gradwell, he can easily turn heel. You know, he gets like people love him whether he's baby face, either he's heel. Why can't they just like turn him and be like, hey, I want an opportunity. Why are you the champion and not me? Why the why do you get the opportunities and not me? It's an easy way to book the whole thing. But it's not working. So, you know, we got to see also like a promo by Amel with Nina Samuel saying that she's ready for everybody. But again, nothing of important, nothing of official news in the women's division. So that's annoying. That's upsetting. So we're going to see also next week or fall. It's the first round. Mark Andrews against Joe Coffey. This is a easy no brainer to me. Joe Coffey will get the win. And, you know, also like Kenny Williams and Tyler Bate. This one is another no brainer. Tyler Bate was actually ask by Sid Scala not to interfere in the match with Trent Seven. And he says, well, I'm going to do them one thing that will piss Trent Seven the most. It's going to make him outrageous. And what is that? I'm going to become the NXT UK champion for the second time. So, you know, here, like, it's already, like, the story's being told. You know, I don't know what you feel, but, like, these two matches, easy books, right there. We said the finals are Trent Seven, Tyler Bate. There's no reason to suspect otherwise, even with the shitty booking of Dee Familia and uh you know everybody else apparently Absolutely. on this on this card but no that's the match they're gonna do because that's the story it makes the most sense that's the only story really anybody cares about on the show to be honest anymore absolutely and you know that, that's what it is so like, let's go quickly to the main event paul wolgan going against trend seven wolgan got a, like just got an opportunity with lg dragonov for this title again and he was the one that injured quote unquote angel dragonov so like trend seven was supposed to get the win we already just mentioned that good match though you know like uh, they're a little like on the heavyweight side but like they were able to give us a pretty decent match uh, like a lot of power bombs a lot of like german suplexes i like that he went for like you know the like his like clothesline that he does but in the end you know we got to see how like Wolgan missed like a uh, pretty much the swanton bomb then trend seven hit him with the knees and like you saw at the end he gets the, the bull's hammer i think it's called yeah the burning or, like, hammer or the burning hammer yep and then one two three paul tell me a little bit about this at least no cheating right keep fair and square trend seven gets the win and he advances to the next round yeah, I mean, I mean, it was a good match. Trent Seven, he got a win here. Like you said, it wasn't cheating. He didn't kick the guy in the balls. He didn't have, you know, a lackey or a flunky out there, you know, distracting the ref or anything like that. He got a good win. You know, Trent Seven shows like, hey, I'm a piece of shit. I'm a scumbag, but I'm also a great wrestler and I can beat you in the ring. And, you know, there was no reason, to, again, to think otherwise that he would lose. Did that hurt the main event? For me, Maybe a little bit because there was at no point did you think, oh, why not Wolfie? No, you never thought Wolfgang was going to win this. That was never a, like, oh, my God, the upset. Eh, so eh, sometimes that hurts a match a little bit. And it did, I think, on this show that especially nothing really beforehand was super exciting. We saw some good matches, but the endings bleh, left us flat. Um, but I mean, at least this was the right ending. At least this did what yes, it was supposed you know, to bracket do. Bracket right there for you, family. Oliver Carter, Trent Seven is going to be the semifinals on the left side. And then, you know, here we already say maybe Joe Coffey against Tyler Bate. We're thinking that yes. could be the thing. And, you know, like you said, we close the show with Trent Seven staring at the NXT UK Championship. Like I said, nothing, of, nothing like too surprising here. Nothing too crazy. But like now, I promised to Paul, I said I'll give him like huge news, but they're going to be bad news. So it's time to deliver, you know, the bomb. And the bomb is three guys, I mean, or like a, a whole group, and a guy from the Familia is going to NXT 2.0. Charlie Dempsey and Gallus. 
all of those guys are going to NXT. To I mean, it, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, look, Dempsey can cut a decent promo. I mean, look at him. And you see, the one thing is, if they're going to NXT 2.0, if this is something because now 2.0 is live, this Triple H's people and stuff involved are at yes. least in control. You know, more so. It's not Vince and his shitty team. I'm not saying 2.0 is a good show because it's still not. It still sucks. It's still the worst show in wrestling. Yes. But but at least when they're there, they go through the system when they get called up to the main roster. That's at least fully controlled by Triple H. And that's that will. So they'll, they'll eventually be in good hands. So I don't yes. hate it as much as I would have hated it two months ago. But the only thing is you keep taking all these guys Dempsey, I felt like more. I felt like he was barely here for a cup of coffee. Yeah, you know what I mean. He, yeah. he didn't he didn't hold gold. You're telling me D Familia couldn't have been tag champs? They couldn't have be, beat fucking Briggs and Jensen. They couldn't have been tag champs for a little bit. Okay, they dropped the belts. Then you move Dempsey to exactly. Window. They're just like you know. They're just rushed. You know, like they're just rushed. It's just like okay, okay, you look good. You know, you can you can. You know what it was? Move. It was as soon as they saw that Ilya and Dragonoff and Walter match on the takeover. They're like. Huh? They're like these UK guys can wrestle good, and now it's like a factory. They keep cycling them through. They're yes. like, yep, yes. we want to keep taking. They're like, a, like you said, like a getting ready, like it's a, like territory. Where's Frazier? Like you know? Yeah, where's Frazier? Yeah, two point oh, two point oh. You know, like now, uh, what I came on, I, uh, I like a kid is like I come. Yeah, I, I yeah, but but I'm saying, I mean, I know where they are, but I'm saying they were on NXT UK. Yeah, almost every other week they were featured in storylines. What are they doing in 2.0? Nothing. Being jobbers, losers. No, it's true. No, that's the thing. Like, hopefully they are handled better. The only ones that kind of like did a little decent is pretty deadly. They got the, ch- the tag team championships right away, but now they're like in the mid in the midst of things. We'll see what happens, family, but this is what we have. And, you know, this is our show for today. Thank you so very much for every single one of you for being with us one more time. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. A lot of good things are coming, family. So just give us time. Let us cook it. Let us develop it. You know, we're not like NXT UK that we just like, you know, rush everything. We're going to actually deliver the best thing for you guys. So, Paul, also like, where else can they find us? Well, and guys, you know, don't forget tomorrow, Impact Emergence. That is one thing we will be delivering to you guys on time like we always do but make sure you follow us so you don't miss that and all of our other updates on facebook on rope break the og rope break on twitter original rope break on instagram twitch and tiktok and right here on youtube the home of the number one podcast in the youtube wrestling community the original rope break and you and me have one more thing that is left to say and that is uh, uh the uh,